If depression is so bad for you, why did evolution not just get rid of it? It doesn't, I mean, why would it, what's the adapt to, you know, what would be adaptive about having depression? This is an interesting conversation. But what's interesting is, is that you see the immune inflammatory system has since, uh, you know, our <laughs> earliest life was in place to fight pathogens. It's there to heal your wounds. So what happens is, is that when you are, are infected, your immune system activates. And what happens is that's gonna communicate directly to the brain in two brain regions which are underscored here the hypervigilance area, and the withdrawal area. You see, what happens when you have an infection and you're a hunter-gatherer? It makes a lot of sense that you better stay put because you need the energy to fight the infection. You also don't want to leave yourself susceptible to predatorial attack. So it makes sense if you've got an infection and you're a hunter-gatherer to stay where you are fight your infection with the extra energy you're gonna allocate, and reduce your susceptibility to attack. It also makes sense, if you're in that state, that you better be hypervigilant, because you are highly susceptible at that moment. So through evolution, the immune system communicated to the brain to make you hypervigilant and to result in psychomotor retardation. Now, most of us are not being chased by tigers. Most of us are not dying from the diseases of infection we died from 100 years ago, although in some parts of the world they still are, but not here in North America. It's psychosocial stress. It is social determinants. It's unhealthy lifestyle. And the brain doesn't know any different. The brain doesn't know that the reason why your stress axis is activated is because you're under financial duress versus you're being chased by a tiger. The advantage, if you outrun the tiger, is that that's only a short stress. That lasts no longer than a few seconds. But psychosocial stress goes on for months and years. So the brain then reacts with hypervigilance and psychomotor retardation. And these are the phenomenological dimensions of depression. Psychomotor retardation involves cognition, fatigue, drive, pleasure. It also involves anxiety. And what's so striking is that 75% of patients with depression have anxiety. And that's subserved by alterations in the anterior cingulate cortex, which is activated by activated immune systems.